Hi, everybody. A very warm welcome to the Sunday Live with Fit and Calm. And every Sunday, we try to bring you an aspect of uh, you know, yogic living off the mat. And today we have uh, you know, a very special topic to my head. I've been really wanting to do this from many, many months because I've personally benefited from osteopathy a lot. So I thought everyone should kind of get to know what osteopathy is and uh, we'll go a little bit of uh, detail into it. And the first person that I had in my mind for this is the one who's here, <laughs> Dr. Spandan Kati. So hi Spandan, I just spotlight you. Hello, hello. Hi, so this is Dr. Spandan and uh, Dr. Spandan is a dentist she also practices osteopathy and craniosacral work, and she's um, she has completed her advanced degrees in both of these fields. She's also currently teaching at the Department of Osteopathy in Shrishri University, and she's been in alternative medicine since like 15 years. She's uh, like worked all around uh, the world, you know, working with people, and I've personally had the opportunity to uh, get uh, several even CST sessions, osteopathy as well. And one thing which I um, love the most about her, I have to say, is she's super bubbly, super fun. And at the same time, she's also so uh, very connected to anyone who comes and very willing to help. Um, she's She's been there for me like many times uh, for different things. And thank you, Spandan, for that. And I'm so grateful that you could come here and take us through this. So a very warm welcome and everyone who's watching a very, very warm welcome to you and Spandan, you can just say a hello to everyone. Hi everyone. So nice to meet you. <laughs> you guys can drop us a hello with your name, um, you know, whoever's watching. So Spandan, um, I wanted to ask what um, actually is uh, osteopathy? Everyone, uh, you know, has heard, I think, but uh, what is it? Is it healing? Is it like a proper science? Can you show us, uh, let us know what it is? So osteopathy is, uh, it's a treatment. It's, it's a proper treatment modality. It's an alternative form of treatment. Uh, alternative in a way that we don't prescribe medications. And um, it's, uh, I am not sure what healing is. I wouldn't really put it in that purview because um, <clears throat> if you look at healing as an energy transfer that is happening right now between you and me also. But osteopathy is a, it's a form of manual work. We use our hands to work on patients and uh, it involves specific principles, specific concepts that we use to work on a body. It's basically based on the fact that the body knows how to align itself and the root cause of a disease needs to be found out. We do not do symptomatic treatment. We actually dig in and find out where is this root cause coming from. And it looks very beautifully at the interconnectedness of the body, the connection between the body and the mind. And most importantly, osteopathy opens up circulation. So whenever there is any discomfort or any disease in the body, there it basically also means that there is a restriction in circulation. Whenever there is stiffness, circulation is restricted. And that then becomes a vicious cycle because all stiffness, fear, all circulation restriction away. So then, you know, so then it just, it, it just for anybody who's had a pain or stiffness in their body would have noticed that it increases gradually over a period of time. And then also gets better very gradually over a period of time. So that's basically circulation trying to push through to reconnect itself, reestablish itself. So osteopathy is a very cool form of treatment. We do manual work. We take very nice case history. And you are, I think it's one of those rare sciences that works with the body. We're not working on the body. So we're not basically telling the body, you have to do this. We are basically listening to what the body is showing and we're working with the body. So it's a very beautiful organic form of treatment. Okay. And uh, what does osteopathy help with? What are the different things that, uh, you know, one can go for? Like for instance, um, I know I personally benefited a lot um, after I had my knee surgery and I know that my movement was very restricted and, uh, like for months, I, I used to have this challenge. 
Uh, so uh, what are the different things and when can people opt for osteopathy? So um, because osteopathy works with the interconnectedness of the body, it works on everything. So in, in the Indian terminology, osteopathy is like an alu. You know, it can be used as an adjunct. <laughs> it can be used as an adjunct to any form of treatment or it can also be taken as a standalone treatment. And uh, uh, we don't... So, you know, when the baby is forming in the mother, it's not that the hands came first, then the legs came, then the stomach, the body created together. The baby formed together and then was born. So osteopathy does not look at, does not differentiate between certain segments of the body. It basically understands that there is something called connective tissue fascia, which is basically the fabric. If you've seen Harry Potter, then it is the invisibility cloak in the body. It is that which connects everything. And when you work with connective tissue fascia, not only symptoms, but also functionality improves. So osteopathy that way works on anything and everything under the sky. It is a very beautiful form of treatment. It can be given right from pregnant women to old people and everybody in between. So from newborns to geriatrics, it, it pretty much covers everything. And there is, I don't think there is any specific contraindication for osteopathy except one or two where there is an extreme acute um, say, let's say immediately after surgery or, you know, something which is very, very extreme. Otherwise, osteopathy pretty much works on anything and everything. In my, in my uh, uh, time of work, um, I have seen people who have opted for integrative medicine. So they are already having an intervention with allopathy or with Ayurveda or homeopathy, and they choose to have osteopathy as an add-on, which only improves and fastens their recovery. And there are also people who've taken osteopathy as a standalone treatment. It has helped them also. But saying that osteopaths also believe in interreferral systems. We're not um, those seeing wale loki, you know, our work is the only most, it's not like that. Whatever is best for the patient. So um, it works. I don't think there is any condition that osteopathy can't work on actually. And, uh, you know, another question I had was, um, how does an imbalance, like in one part of the body, you just mentioned this in uh, initially, you know, you go to the root um, cause. So can you just dig in a little bit deeper into how an imbalance in one part of the body impacts the whole body? Because usually, um, I think with allopathy, this has become the system, you get a headache, uh, you know, you take a pill for it you get a pain in the knee you just have everything very integrated like not integrated just as one set just like you mentioned about a baby so could you just tell us a little bit more in detail about it? yeah so Abhi, let's take the example of the pandemic everybody is working from home and ergonomics goes out of the window yeah, so people are working like this, they're working like this. So shoulder pain, back pain. So I'll, I'll give a very simple example. Lower back pain, very commonly found. I think it is an epidemic on itself. It's very rampant. Now, lower back pain by itself, if you look at the structure in the body, it connects to various other structures around it. Connects to the hips, connects to the upper back, middle back. And then the hip joints coordinate themselves with the shoulder joints. So there are so many structures that are corresponding to the area of concern. So if I have somebody coming into my clinic saying, I have lower back pain, can you help me with it? I wouldn't just work with their lower back. I would actually go and test them and see which other structures am I also finding stiffness in. It is quite possible that twists in the ankles could be originating from the hip or tightness in the jaws could be originating from the shoulders because that's how the body works. That's how the muscles are connected. So if you're, if you're looking at a holistic approach to the body, if you're looking at the body as an integrated system, then um, working in the area of issue, of course, will be done, but you also need to look at the areas that are surrounding it. So that way is osteopathy, we are like uh, detectives. If we take a magnifying glass, where is this coming from? 
<laughs> and there are some very nice ways of diagnosing you know physically you may find stiffness there may be some significant biological event or just by the way the person walks into the clinic or their posture or the muscles that are firing more in comparison to the muscles that are firing less there are many many ways of deducing that's why osteopathy is a treatment we kind of do a lot of observation but once you have found where the problem is originating from then the resolution becomes very fast so that then makes a lot of sense for example you know there are people who say 30 years ago i had a slip disc this can't slip by the way it's a misnomer you can't just bend and pitch go something slips out of your <laughs> spine as any hota hai but you know there are people who say i had a slip disc 30 years ago it still hurts sure any injury in the body does not last more than 16 weeks you know that you've had a surgery yourself the physical healing of the scar is done but it is the strengthening and the rehab of the muscles after that that is very important and that strengthening then needs to go deep into the connected structures so then if you're looking at the lower back then strengthening the middle and the upper back becomes very important addressing the muscles of the abdomen becomes very important so we are looking at changing an inherent stress pattern in the body then body awareness comes in working with the brain comes in you know helping the body relook at the whole pattern of injury or stress then becomes very important so that is osteopathy kind of you know encapsulates all of this and that's why in osteopathy sessions uh collaborating with the patient becomes very important so people you know they tend to come and say fix me i'm like hello namaste <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to help you but you're going to fix yourself and then you start the interventions with osteopathy so it is a two sided effort but the results are pretty phenomenal that's a little bit how osteopathy works yeah um you know just like you said the results are phenomenal i just wanted to kind of share um like you know this um after my uh, knee surgery i had like a really hard time with the range of movement my leg was not moving at all and i remember after the single osteopathy session i got like you know about this much movement in my leg which i had been getting like in the past i think 3 months that had happened with um, normal treatments <laughs> so i uh, yeah i kind of uh, you know understand like what you were saying i hope people who are watching also are getting the same you are a very good patient and you took responsibility <laughs> for your body <laughs> that is a rare occurrence <laughs> thank you you were you were held as the epitome of you know what an ideal person would be who comes for osteopathy my teacher was the one who treated her how oh, she was all praises she's like this is how people should be look at how responsible she is she's really making the effort and amazing yeah yeah thank you and uh, could you tell us uh, what an ideal treatment looks like uh, you know for uh, when it comes to physical manipulation was uh, so what is the difference between like uh, physical you know, physiotherapy and between osteopathy as well and how does a treatment of osteopathy look like i understand that it could be different for different uh, people uh, but still could you like tell us a little bit yeah so um, basically it involves the person lying down or sitting depends on the maneuvers that are going to be done it involves a treatment table and two hands of the practitioner that's what a physical <laughs> because it's hands on work now the difference from physiotherapy is that we do visceral work now the organs in the abdomen can also have a major effect on the rest of the body so um the tension in the ligaments of the liver can affect the shoulder can affect the back so osteopaths go in and look very detailed in a very detailed way at the visera second range of motion actually is not the end goal of an osteopathy treatment range of motion happens anyway we also look at improving functionality and endurance so you are you are looking at improving the efficacy of movement it is not not just improving the amount with which uh an area of the body can move and yes we work with joints but we do much more than that we also work with specific muscle groups we can work with ligaments tendons we work with plumbing we work with the circulation arteries veins we work with connective tissue fascia so osteopathy is basically a bouquet of techniques 
the techniques used can range from um, HVLA, which is called high velocity loan, which is basically a thrust. You're cracking stuff in the body, which is rarely used now. To listening treatments, to something called muscle energy techniques, and a very very subtle form of a very light, lovely, yummy kind of a touch called craniosacral. So craniosacral is basically called cranial osteopathy, and that is the the gentlest, most loving touch that we can use. Um, the fact is, anything that is living moves, and the body is a living structure. So every structure in the body has. a form of movement has an expression of movement it is the osteopath's job basically it is our thing to go in and find out which structures are not moving the way they are supposed to it could be muscles organs tissues bones whatever and then helping it come back to its original movement and alignment so then then you know osteopathy goes much more than structural work then we are not just limiting ourselves to mastitia bones and muscles we are actually going much deeper in we are working with the connections between the organs the soft tissue connections like i said connective tissue fascia that's a different area of work altogether and we also specialize in working with pain so pain is actually a function of the brain it is not a function of the tissues so you would have noticed that you got along your day and suddenly you realize are i got a cut here i never realized you know ye khun nikal raha tha mujhe to pata hi nahi tha so pain is not a function of the tissues you may get hurt you may not realize it pain is a function of your brain when it decides that you are under threat and you need to pay attention then pain comes so it's basically an internal alarm system that can go wrong a lot of times especially when you are talking about chronic cases so osteopathy also looks at helping the nervous system to recalibrate itself to an to in a way that you don't get unnecessary pain anymore so it's very it's very nice work it's very organic work okay and um one thing i wanted to ask was this is for everyone like you know who's watching as well or even otherwise what are the things can are there any diy things that people can just do at home i remember i was taught uh, you know many of the exercises uh, specifically to kind of bring an alignment into the whole body and i did them for many many years i actually still do them uh, many times and they've helped me a lot so can you teach a few simple things uh, to the viewers here so that they can uh, just for a, like a healthy body or the things that are easy to teach also for you <laughs> yeah so the thing with osteopathy is you don't have to be sick to take a session it it's not necessary that you have to have a problem or you have to have a i think we should have started with that sanan <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can be taken by anybody and everybody like you know you nobody is allergic to more health yeah so an osteopathy session just ups your levels of health um we work very deeply with the breath so the diaphragm the breathing muscle below the rib cage that plays a very big role in in breathing and that's uh, fundamentally important in maintaining the balance between the chest and the abdomen so it it balances the pressure it also massages the gut as it moves up and down so uh, what can we do we can do Let's do something for the shoulder. Awesome, है ना? Let we'll do something for the shoulder and let's see what else comes. Okay, all right. So um, there are these groups of muscles called the scalenes and the levators. Levator, I basically elevate. Elevators are the ones that lift up. So levators are the one that help the shoulders to come up. And most of the times, people subconsciously are like this. like you have to literally tell relax drop your shoulders and then they breathe in breathe out and then they're like oh, okay i can drop my shoulders so we'll do something for this and uh, then let's see how it goes okay all right so i want the right palm on the right shoulder blade okay yeah uh, before that check your jaws because you're working with the shoulders we'll also check how the jaw going so open and close your jaws side to side uh, go crazy with your jaw okay 
because when you work with the shoulders the jaws also inherently open up so just seeing how that goes so right palm on the right shoulder blade nice it's kind of you know brings into my mind how beautiful yoga is because we do the, all this in yoga anyways <laughs> yeah yeah it's like that it's like osteopathy is like scientific yoga with i mean it's like a westernized yoga with specific techniques to be done okay left palm and on the right palm. elbow left palm on the right elbow okay we'll do something called an net muscle energy technique so we'll use the breath in this so breathe in and pull the elbow back and a little towards the head thoda piche towards the head breathe out now once again breathe in hold your breath and pull the shoulder towards the head a little bit hold it there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 breathe out and let it go so mets can be used for release and strengthening both let's do the other side left palm on the left shoulder blade right palm goes on the left elbow okay so just getting used to this joint breathe in pull the elbow a little back and a little towards the head and breathe out now breathe in pull the elbow towards the head little bit hold it there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and breathe out and release oh we forgot to check the shoulders anyways check your jaw now i hope it's different <laughs> i think i feel a little it will being a little bit more clear i've never uh, actually paid any attention to this earlier yeah how the job is connected the <laughs> yeah it's basically anyway it's not an anatomy class okay now <laughs> let's do something for lymphatic drainage because here also so the, the lymph is the 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 swachh bharat abhiyan of the body it's a very slow moving toxic waste removal system so it all comes out and empties itself in the left side behind the shoulder behind the clavicle the collarbone so we'll do a little bit of lymphatic drainage because shoulder tends to become very heavy so let's do the left index finger on top of the collarbone right collarbone left index finger on top of the right collarbone rest of the fingers next to it right fingers on the shoulder blade on the on the shoulder basically okay we'll do some pumping we'll, let's do a little lymphatic pumping okay breathe in lift your arm up breathe out take the arm down breathe in lift the arm up breathe out bring it down once again breathe in take it up and breathe out bring it down two more breathe in out in and out okay move both your shoulders see is there a difference yeah yeah okay <laughs> to be yeah. nice <laughs> to 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 be nice to be cushy like yes 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 there is a difference <laughs> i i i'm just observing if it's a little thing i think if we had done this beforehand it would have been much more clearer yeah so that's it like we basically compared it let's do the other side because the other one will feel very left out to wo akelepan se mar jayega so you take the, <laughs> you take the right index finger on top of the left collarbone <laughs> okay right index right. on the left collarbone rest of the fingers next to it okay right fingers on the shoulder okay breathe in arm up breathe out arm down breathe in and down in out two more breathe in out breathe in and out okay now check do the shoulders feel equal it 
it's better than before the left one yeah yeah yay okay <laughs> shall we do one more for the one, neck one. sorry yes yes ne- neck i think definitely we should do ha huh. neck ka test karte hain we will we, i'll be smart now so chalo chalo let's test the neck so you turn your head by the way on youtube we have this um we were doing feels amazing i had a restricted and locked jaw and now feels so relieved oh oh yay that's so nice i'm so happy to know that okay yeah. so let's test the neck now so you look to the, the right and to the left don't push yourself we're just checking range of motion so right and left up and down Okay, so there's a very interesting thing. the The little muscles at the back of the neck are actually connected to the optic nerve, the outer covering of the optic nerve, the dura con- connects to those muscles. So um, that's why when you are looking at the screen for a long time, it's very common for the neck to get stiff. So we can release the neck by simple eye movement. So we'll do this. Okay, so I just want you to place your fingers lengthwise behind the neck, lengthwise behind the neck. We have tested range of motion, huh? We like we've been smart this time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now let's use the eyes. So blink your eyes very very fast, super fast, at a medium pace, and now very slowly. If you feel something moving in your neck, don't get spooked. It is the connection I spoke about. Again, blink your eyes very very fast, at a medium pace. and very slowly perfect now look up look down up down up down right left right left right left now turn your eyes clockwise three times and anti clockwise three times very nice now again blink your eyes and let go take a long deep breath in and breathe out okay now check your neck movement yeah there's an actually there's a difference yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so these are these are simple diy techniques they're like just a minute techniques that you can do multiple times a day but osteopathy actually goes much more than this and i forgot to say osteopathy also you know like when i said it works with the nervous system there's one particular nerve osteopathy works very closely with it's called the vagus nerve that connects the brain and the gut in fact vagus nerve is now connected to immunity and inflammation any chronic inflammation in the body swelling in the body is connected to impaired vagal function so when we work with the breath release the diaphragm do all sorts of things you're helping to improve vagal nerve function which improves your social communication eye contact general openness so it it's it's the nerve of kindness empathy and happiness so osteopaths make you happy so we also <laughs> work very closely with the brain <laughs> so even even now as we are doing these techniques and we are using the breath you may find that breathing is easier deeper or there may be a, a general sense of goofiness so you know people will be laughing more smiling more ki pata nahi kya ho gaya what do you feel so that i just realized that I, after we did this no automatically like after we did the simple um, eye movements and then i opened my eyes automatically i took like a deep breath in and uh, out yeah so that's really before you even said take a deep breath in <laughs> yeah so that's that's improving vagus vagus work awesome spun can you uh, you know tell shine a little bit of light on uh, like the connection between osteopathy and yoga and like meditation uh, meditation comes as a part of yoga pranayama i think because it's very deeply connected with the whole body there's i think a very inherent connection which i see i'm pretty sure it was a yogi who found osteopathy let me put it like that <laughs> because because anybody 
who practices osteopathy or even the founder at still dr at still who founded osteopathy william sutherland there are few pioneers you know these were people who used to do a lot of what we call manan deep introspection deep observation awareness to the body understanding the the connection between the body and the mind it is impossible that they were not yogis i mean yoga goes back millions and millions of years i mean science is yet to prove so many things in yoga 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 talks about stuff that science is like yeah so you know it's still going to take a lot of time but um basically working with the holism of the body understanding the nature of the mind mind not so much in osteopathy because we are principally structural work we began as structural work but the effect of patterns of the mind on the body is a very important vrittis no that's a very big thing so in osteopathy also if you see pain is a pattern stiffness is a pattern when you get stressed pain increases when you happy pain reduces how does this work so just like yoga osteopathy also focuses on the right form of breathing um getting the organs to move um yoga talks about prana osteopathy talks about circulation it's kind of gross subtle in in a way like that and overall well being of the body so it's just that yoga is something you do by yourself it's an anushasan it is something that you do for yourself osteopathy is where you are guided into it and it involves specific techniques that um uh, work on the body that work on the soft tissues we also work on opening up specific areas of you know uh, circulation using different techniques so osteopathy is more structural in its approach to begin with later on of course the rest of the uh, subtleties also open up but yoga i think is just boom bang on you like go straight into nadis and osteopathy hasn't reached nadis yet or it takes a while to get there because you are helping somebody else become aware of their body hai na so then the the way is always grows too subtle they will also eventually realize that patients themselves come back and say you know i felt like something opened up in my body some channels over i feel i'm feeling so nice my pain is so much better and there is something that motivates them to put in an effort to um, move their body towards health so um, i think the biggest strength osteopathy and yoga have in common is they both focus on health and this is something dr at still himself used to say he used to say anybody can find disease what's the big deal in it the the gift or the skill is to find health and to work with health and helping the body because that's our inherent nature so um, guruji of course shri shri has given a lot of beautiful insights on osteopathy how it works at the subtle levels of the body but um, i think uh, i would say yoga huh can you share a few <laughs> um he spoke uh, very nice so there was this uh, uh, webinar happened between uh, the professors of osteopathy in the university with guruji and uh, he spoke about how osteopathy plays a very important role in opening up channels in the body prana and nadis is basically circulation opening up the uh areas of the flow of force of life and then he also spoke about awareness awareness and the breath so it's not just enough to structurally open up things in the body it's also very important to make the person aware of it i have seen this in my years of work whenever i see a person for osteopathy sessions they eventually learn how to meditate by themselves i don't even have to nudge them or push them or even recommend it because when you start moving towards health the state of mind is so beautiful like people want to be in it all the time without paying money matlab you know for <laughs> for a session <laughs> you have to pay for it but they are like oh, i love this state of mind how can i be in this all the time so he he spoke about the importance of um, awareness and how osteopathy has the ability to connect the the gross to the subtle and wow. he also spoke about um, how osteopathy is, is is the bridge between mainstream and alternative medicines because osteopathy right now in india is open only for doctors as masters 
and bachelor's it's a five year course now it's as good as a you know any mainstream medical course so osteopaths come equipped with solid knowledge of body anatomy and physiology all other sciences they study everything that a person in a mainstream medicine would study but they also understand the subtleties of the body you know so then it becomes the ideal bridge to work to do research with to add on as an adjunct in in treatment procedures so it's it's been a part of his vision to uh, to have osteopathy uh, growing to give people options for medicine free there is nothing wrong with medication it's just that people like taking medication because it's a shortcut like yeah, popping the pill culture has become so rampant and pharmacists yeah. are also very happy giving over the counter drugs in fact in the university osteopathy uh, works very closely in collaboration with uh, the department of yoga so wow. there are already yeah there are already a lot of collaborative studies going on so that ways um they both have a lot to learn from each other you know osteopathy brings in the element of yoga and the whole structural scientific aspect of it things you can measure before after and yoga brings in this aspect of subtlety of the body and how the gross and the subtle connect so yeah he's uh, he spoke about it for 45 minutes but in 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 a capsule it was this that the presence awareness breath awareness towards the body that is so beautiful thank you for sharing that and uh, it, it's really nice how to see uh, like i told you we also you know make sure we make everyone meditate here also every uh, every sunday we do that like for 20 minutes and you kind of laid such a beautiful foundation to it all that how osteopathy even leads you subtly into meditation shall we meditate for a little bit and after that we'll take a few questions okay so uh, we'll do we'll do a very nice uh, breathing technique and from there let's go into a meditation yes it's yes. very simple awesome. i need one palm on the chest and one palm on the stomach ek hath chhati pe ek hath pet pe so one hand on the one palm on the chest one palm on the stomach now as you breathe in just notice which palm rises first so you breathe in if you're breathing more into the stomach the hand on the stomach will raise if you are breathing into the chest the hand on the chest will raise and breathe out now we will merge both so imagine you are breathing in through a very long tunnel and this is the very long short sorry a very long gentle subtle breath okay so we breathe into the stomach first so take a long breath in breathe in fill up your stomach very slow breathing so hand on the tummy rises continue to now breathe into your chest we are in the same in breath keep breathing little more little more the hand on the chest will rise and very slowly breathe out so we look at equalizing the in breath and the out breath breathe in again long slow deep breath so breathe into your stomach once your stomach is filled with air continue to breathe into the chest so the hand on the chest will rise keep going keep going stretch your breath little more little more little more and very slowly breathe out let's do a few more breathe in fill up the stomach nice and proper continue to fill up your chest keep breathing little more a little more than the last time stretch 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 and very slowly breathe out let's do two more breathe in into your stomach fill up your stomach and 
continue to breathe into your chest. Keep going, keep going. Little more, little more, and a little more. And very slowly breathe out. We'll do our last one. Let's give it a hundred percent. Breathe into your stomach. Fill up your stomach nice and full. Now continue to fill up your chest. Keep breathing in. Keep going, keep going. Little more. Little more. And very slowly breathe out. You can gently place your palms on your knees facing the ceiling. If you wish, you can close your eyes. Take a nice long deep breath in and breathe out. Let's do a simple awareness towards health. Take your attention to any place in your body where you feel a little uncomfortable. You have a little pain or stiffness. Any place in your body that feels different. So just become aware of that place in your body. And notice what does it feel like? If you had to describe it to a three-year-old child, what would you say? Children understand colors, textures, and shapes. So this area of discomfort, what would you describe it as? Give it three specific terms and then come back to your breath. Take your attention to the floor underneath your feet, to the cushion you are sitting on. And become aware of the outline of your body. Just the physical presence of your body. So just becoming very aware of your physical body. Now I want you to take your attention to a place in your body where you feel good. Some place that feels nice. If it is difficult to find a place in your body that feels good physically, think of something that makes you smile, that makes you happy. Health in the body equals happiness in the mind. What does this feel like? This sensation that came when you smiled, what did that feel like? If you again had to describe it to three-year-old child, what color would you give the sensation? What shape, what texture? Specify it. This is health. And now go back to your breath. Keep taking deep, joyful breaths in and out.
and with every outgoing breath notice how your breath deepens how your body relaxes more and more and observe the sensation in the mind the sensations that came when you oriented to a happy place now as you become aware of your body also notice if you sense any warmth that comes through as the breath deepens the nervous system relaxes and circulation opens and when circulation opens there is a beautiful sense of warmth and comfort now let's find another place in the body where you feel good physically if you can find this place in your body okay otherwise think of something else that makes you smile or that makes you happy what does this sensation feel like give it a color give it a texture give it a shape and notice if there is a change in your breath as you become aware of this area in your body where you are feeling good take another long deep breath in and breathe out opening up to the vagus nerve become aware of the front of your body and take your attention to the back of your body the branch of vagus at the back of body is responsible for protection and survival and the branch of vagus in the front of the body is responsible for love and communication the two aspects of our nervous system take another long deep breath in and breathe out Let's revisit the area of discomfort that we began with. And notice how does this area feel now? Is it still as uncomfortable as it was to begin with or has something changed? Whatever it is, just become aware of it and let it go. become aware of your breath the 
become aware of your mind. Any thoughts coming and going, let them be. Slowly becoming aware of the physical body. Take a long deep breath in. And breathe out. You can slowly become aware of the floor underneath your feet. Slowly move your toes. Wiggle your fingers. Become aware of the surface you're sitting on. Take another deep breath in. And breathe out. Make a beautiful smile. If you had closed your eyes, then very gently open your eyes. So beautiful, Spandana. I didn't want to open my eyes. We just did a very basic body awareness. But did you notice any change in the area of discomfort? Were you able to... I know people tend to go very deep. Usually it's much shorter. But I thought why not make it into a meditation. It was really nice. I think the breathing also initially when we did, um, breathing itself uh, brought semblance of, I think, peace and relaxation to the whole body. You, if people are meditating along with us, you can also leave a comment as well. Let us know how it was for you. Jack is saying very relaxed. I'm also craniosacral therapist, able to feel the changes much deeper and I feel wonderful. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, so, if, does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, you can just drop it in the comments here and we'll take up the questions. So, uh, Spandan, I had done this earlier as well. I think in one of the sessions only I had done. Uh, and I think it always feels really amazing to just see the body's outline and uh, just see it in colors, textures. The very first time I had done it, it, was, it felt like a little weird. And I was like, what do you feel? You know, how, how would you put a texture to help? How would you put a color to help? But it feels very nice um, when I just um, compare the two. And it's also very nice how the structure changes of the part of the part where you feel it's unhealthy and slowly and slowly you see like health returning to it. It's nice. Yeah, awareness to the body by itself is a sense of safety for the brain. A very common tendency we have when we have pain or discomfort is to switch off from that area of the body. So it is like, it is like there is something that has entered my house and I'm switching off the light on it. It's counterintuitive. So that is why pain tends to linger. Even though the injury doesn't exist anymore, pain tends to linger because the brain hasn't been able to understand that things have changed. That injury doesn't exist anymore. There is no more threat. So then uh, in, in my sessions, a lot of times when I ask people, you know, can you feel your legs? They're like, what legs? You know, they'll get up and they'll look at their legs. They're like, my legs are right here. I'm like, yes, I know. Can you feel it? So this concept of becoming aware of your body or taking attention to your physical body itself is like a very big thing. But this is one of the core concepts. It's a breakthrough actually to reconnect with the brain. And health begets health. It's very simple. The moment the brain realizes, Are, there is nothing here. Why am I giving pain unnecessarily? Fact, the pain has changed. So it's basically repatterning. It's, it's neuroscience what we did. It's called the neurotag sequence. Pain, area of discomfort, specific event, 
or a significant biological event and other factors that caused it there is a chain of events when you break that pattern and you help the brain to realize there is no more threat the pain pattern shifts so it's it's called remapping the brain so that's what we did it's very interesting actually obviously that was a phenomenal science very very nice wow and uh, you know does meditation also do something similar because i can see a lot of connect connect because people also uh, get a get really healthy and better uh, you know even after uh, like meditation uh, uh, regular meditation so uh, meditation helps in in a way that it opens the prana channels it opens the nadis in the body meditation done with awareness becomes body mapping a lot of times what happens is you start off meditating with awareness to the body and then you switch off that's why people when they open their eyes after meditation they don't even know their head was hanging down or you know they had lost their their posture so meditation is great at giving relaxation and going re- into really deep states of consciousness where you're transcending the body completely you're going into a different realm and that of course changes the flow of prana and uh, opens up nadis in the body osteopathy focuses more on being aware of the physical level of the body also the rest of it comes a little later but when like when i took you through this awareness exercise i was specifically saying take your attention here there so if people heard it then they would have known <laughs> that i was <laughs> orienting them back to the physical uh, the brain the brain corresponds um much faster when you are physically aware of your body because then it can measure the change but when you are transcending the body you know then it is magic that's why a lot of times you know people fall asleep in a in a session or they fall asleep in meditation they open their eyes and they like what did you do this feels like magic i feel so different so it's it's just osteopathy is just making that magic very scientific so they are related in a level but meditation goes much deeper actually osteopathy still keeps getting you back because we have started with resolving an issue structurally so staying aware of that level of existence becomes very important um, there's a question from premalata uh, can rheumatoid arthritis also be treated with osteopathy yes lot of us lot of my colleagues my students um have it's just that see like i said it's not magic and when you've had a pre existing pattern existing in your body it takes a little time to resolve but yes it resolves i have personally worked with ra but i had to see people over a few sessions so when i personally work in my practice i space my sessions 10 days apart a week apart depending on how i feel the frequency is needed and then i give homework to do like how kushpinder also saying ha i remember like i was told to start my day with those yeah like three times a day i remember i did it <laughs> so so the brain is very the the brain it's like changing a habit pain is also a habit so there is a little effort that needs to be put it's not an impossible set of things that you are asked to do but with gradually with time yes ra can can be managed to a very large extent i've had people who found it difficult to walk a few steps now climb a few flights of stairs they just go up and down three four floors and they are absolutely fine so yes osteopathy helps it goes a very long way structurally of course it opens up circulation opens up the joints releases the root cause but then there is also a little bit of effort that people need to put in as patients and yes there are studies done on it there are studies there are case studies done on rheumatoid arthritis any chronic issue for that matter and again like i said because we also work with vagus vagus communicates with with specific chemicals that reduce inflammation that reduce swelling in the body so when we start giving you techniques specifically to activate the vagus the amount of swelling and inflammation automatically starts going down so that way is yes osteopathy has a multi pronged approach towards chronic inflammatory diseases there's another question how many uh, sessions does it take on an average for osteopathy to work very tricky question oh 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 this is one of the most difficult questions it depends on how your body responds 
I have seen people coming in with massive issues and they get much better in four to five sessions. I've had people coming in with something which was acute and which is not end quote very serious on the spectrum, but they've had to come to me for a few months. So it completely depends on how your body responds, but the call is taken by the patient. As an osteopath, I don't start off your treatments by saying, hi, you have to come eight times to me. Okay, this is how it works. I don't do that. So this is, it's very, it's, it's progressive work. You do one session, you see how you feel, you come for the next. So we actually gauge your progress. And then depending on the amount of responsibility you take and the commitment you give towards your body with the inputs from the osteopath, I, um, I don't think I have personally in my area of work, um, I'm not holding chronic inflammatory diseases in this. So I'm not saying rheumatoid arthritis or MS or fibromyalgia or anything. But for example, if somebody has a disc issue or has a ligament issue or has, you know, post herpetic neuralgia, I don't think I have seen anybody for more than three or four sessions. But yes, if I'm working on a child in the spectrum, or if I'm, if I'm working with someone who's had a particular disorder for 15, 20 years, then yes, I have worked on with them for a few months. But it's, um, it's not a likhapadi thing. So I usually ask people to give it three sessions to see how they're feeling. But in osteopathy, right from session one, you can see the progress. It's very specific. You can't there's, I think one last question we'll take this time um does an osteopathy session hurt <laughs> <laughs> oh that is the cutest question i've ever heard no <laughs> we are not chungis khan ke torturers <laughs> that i'm going to twist and turn and pinch and do all this no no it doesn't hurt why would it hurt why would you ask me i don't climb on top of you <laughs> no not really when you're working with certain groups of muscles, especially in areas of stiffness, it it's not painful. I mean, listen, we don't put a putty on your eyes and blindfold you and say, oh, now you're going to work on you. It doesn't work like that. Your eyes are completely open. But sometimes when you're working with chronic areas of stiffness, then yes, a little bit of effort is done by the muscles. It may be a little pressure but pain no no not really it's not a torture session no it doesn't it doesn't hurt no no it doesn't that's a cute question though <laughs> so cute yeah there's another one which i think you already covered maybe someone missed it can it be done um on children as well i think we already covered it that even from you there's no pain there is pain relief in osteopathy <laughs> Yeah. But then is there anything else you want to share about osteopathy or anything? Uh, I'm a big fan of this work. I, it's, it's one of the most powerful forms of treatment I have seen. I have personally experienced it in my life. I had four broken bones in my lower back and my teacher practiced craniosacral work and osteopathy on me. So, and it's been... 14, 15 years. And that is how I came into alternative medicine, actually. Otherwise, I'm a dentist, was a dentist, not anymore. So um, I, I see a lot of uh, people, you know, being biased about forms of treatment simply because they don't believe in recommending or prescribing medications actively. And that is that is something that concerns me because I think people are in such a hurry to get results. They don't mind taking shortcuts. So that is, that is the only thing I put across to people is, is to have an open mind, have faith in your body. You know, like people don't have faith in their body anymore. Thoda gud, but fix me, fix me. Aray, your body can fix itself. Relax. Give it a little bit of time. So um, yes, it works. And we need more osteopaths. We need more research happening. We have already around thousands of research papers on it, but we need more. So it always always starts with an open mind to say, okay, this is a science. Let me see how it works. 
you know so give keep it as a tangible option if you need it in fact i would recommend and i would highly prescribe everybody to go and take an osteopathy session whenever they can just to know how painless it is <laughs> <laughs> and kids love osteopathy kids love us and most importantly you don't have to be sick you don't have to be unwell you know so i i think i'm pretty sure this is the treatment for the future it is this probably will be the first step that people will take before they opt in for other serious interventions in their lives it's very powerful like i feel very happy and privileged to be a part of this community and so nice of you khush to call me and and you know yap 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 about osteopathy it's, it's so nice <laughs> you so <laughs> i loved being here it was it was really really nice people i think have been very kind they asked very easy questions but it was very nice yeah it was really amazing to have you here as well spandan and i think you know the whole time i was thinking oh my god her students are so lucky like they would be laughing throughout the entire classes i was like if you know i had done my anatomy with her it would have been so amazing <laughs> i think this was the this was a session where i've like laughed the most from like every sunday we do this but yeah this was definitely one where i also laughed so much and i think everyone would have enjoyed it so much and you shared like really amazing things um and you know we'd love to do some more sessions also with you in the future it's always i think it's always nice to have fun and bubbly people here absolutely main gappa marne ke liye hamesha taiyar hu thank you thank you on a sincere thank note like thank you very much uh, you know for coming and tejasvi and i both have this thing that we would really like um, i think we've been blessed to be exposed to so many alternate uh, you know uh, medicine systems as well to so many amazing people who've been seeing so such good results also in um, all of with all of these treatments and uh, we just wanted to bring a different aspect of healthy living uh, to other people so um we we are we were also doing a lot of like nowadays like yoga therapy as well and i could relate a lot of it or a lot of what you shared along with this as well so if uh, people want to contact you uh, just uh, we'll put in the details whatever your details in the description of the video a little bit later so just uh, share it with us and uh, for those of you who are watching so you can join us next week uh, as well so every sunday we do these webinars and we call it like yoga off the mat so something which is an aspect of health of swastha and like spandan had mentioned earlier you know it's it's disease is not is nothing ordinary we give so much attention to it so it should be health that should be the purpose of everything and in the yogic philosophy also we move from it said rog to arogya to swastha so that's that should be the order of things and if you guys want to join anyone who wants to join we are also doing yoga classes and prenatal classes so you can join us for that as well thank you so very much um for joining in today we will see you next week may you stay fit and calm bye bye see you <laughs>